Hi guys, it's Mrs. Maya. I am a fifth grade teacher at Relay, and I'm excited that I get to share a story with you today. Um, and I was actually inspired by my son, Henry. He's a second grader, not at Relay, in a different school. But we've been reading a lot about animals lately. And last night he read to me a story about um, a sea otter from this book, National Geographic. And it was about this sea otter that was rescued off the coast of California and how the teams at the aquarium helped him to get healthy again and then have a nice long life. So then it made me think of this other story that's also true about an animal called Pierre the penguin. This is a true story of Pierre and what happened with him at an aquarium and a biologist named Pam, who works with those penguins and helped him out. So this is called Pierre the Penguin. It is written by Jean Marzola and illustrated by Laura Regan. Okay. So let's see. It says, this is a true story of Pierre, a small penguin in a big museum. It is also about the people at the California Academy of Sciences who worked together to help him through a hard time. All right, let's see what happens to him. All right, here's the start. Down at the end of the African Hall, past statues of animals big and small, there's an aquarium wide and tall with real live penguins, 20 in all. African penguins don't like ice. For them, a warmer place is nice. Now I know at our Baltimore Zoo here in Maryland, those are African penguins. So we, we can see them up close if you haven't seen them already. Here comes pa Pam with fish in her pail. The penguins are fed twice a day without fail. Pam enters the tank through a sky-painted wall. A hidden door there leads out to a hall. Some of the penguins look just the same. Winged bands help Pam call them birds by name. One day, aquatic biologist Pam Observing the penguins saw one in a jam. Do you know what that means? If you're in a jam, that means you're in a tough spot. You maybe have a problem that you need help with. So one of these penguins was in a jam. Gently, gently, she examined Pierre. His feathers were gone. His bottom was bare. Hmm. I know sometimes penguins molt. I wonder if that's what's happening with Pierre. Let's see. Pierre was afraid to go for a swim. He'd get too cold if he dived right in. How can I help you? What can I do? Pam had ideas and tried the first two. She tried a heater and the vet prescribed pills, but nothing worked. Pierre shivered still. Oh. Hmm. The other penguins grew afraid of Pierre. Oh no. He looked so strange that he gave them a scare. They brayed at him as he shivered on shore. They made him feel worse than he felt before. You see this word braid? That's actually the noise that a penguin makes. It's a kind of interesting noise, but it's called, when they call, it's called bray, braid, okay? Boy, that must have been scary for him, but I wish they hadn't looked at the way he looked and made him feel even more sad. A rainy day biologist, Pam, oh, excuse me, one rainy day biologist, Pam, came up with a new idea, Shazam! My dog wears a raincoat, she told the vet. Could Pierre wear a wetsuit? And the vet said, you bet. Hmm. All right, 
Pam and a friend worked day and night to make a pattern that fit just right. Then a wetsuit was made of neoprene, the tiniest one you've ever seen. Do you know what neoprene is? If you've ever seen a wetsuit or one of those outfits that like a surfer will put on if it's too cold to get in the ocean without one, that's neoprene. It keeps the wet out and the heat in. Okay, let's see what they did. Carefully, Pam put on Pierre a wetsuit a featherless penguin could wear. Wait till you see it, look. Look at that little wetsuit. It's the cutest thing. Let's see if it works. Ah, there he is again, look at him. Standing on a rock in his new wetsuit, Pierre the penguin looked mighty cute. I agree. All right. He felt nice and warm and wanted to swim. So what did he do? He dived right in. Splash! Whee! Now Pierre stood proud and tall, and nobody brayed at him at all. Six weeks went by and then a surprise. Pam could hardly believe her eyes. Not only was Pierre no longer cold, he had new feathers. Observe and behold. Wow, so not only did the wetsuit help him swim, it must have helped him heal. Now warm in the water, now warm on shore. Guess who didn't need his wetsuit anymore? Pierre made a nest for his very best friend, and their story goes on, thanks to Pam. The end. Isn't that a great story? So if you remember, this is a true story about Pierre and how a biologist Pam helped him solve a problem. Just like in the book I read with my son Henry last night, this sea otter needed some rescuing. So an aquarium took him in and gave him the treatment that he needed so he can be healed and have a great life. So I'd like to challenge you at home to find a true story of an animal rescue. I'd love for you to share with me what you learned, uh, what happened with the animal, tell me his or her story, and I challenge you, if you do that, to send me a little paragraph of information or teach me about what you learn about a true animal rescue story. And um, if you email me, tell me, telling me about it, I promise I'll write you back. Okay, so here's my email, jmayot at bcps.org. I hope you enjoyed Pierre's story, and I can't wait to learn about more animals that were helped out, rescued, and maybe went on to live healthy lives after that. Okay, happy reading. Bye now.